Jharkhand. Uh, she hails from a tribal community in the Buntu block and you know she had never done anything apart from taking care of her house and her family. Uh, so with the help of our partner Udyogini, they actually launched an entrepreneurship development school, a tie if you can call it, for the tribal women, trained them on entrepreneurship, connected, you know, mentored them, helped us start off a Kirana store which then expanded into a village level service center which meant she used to do mobile repairs, <coughs> sell agri inputs and really expanded it. And she was so, so inspired by the whole thing and she was so proud of herself that she started becoming the role model for others in the community started to inspire them, started to, you know, sing for them, write songs and poems and everything to inspire the women in the community. And she was so inspirational that she actually went on to win the award by the, and she, she was given the award by the governor of uh, Jharkhand. And she is just one of the examples, but when you actually go and visit people, like there's another lady, Mamtaz, who I've met over and over in the last few years in Yavadmal district. And uh, again, you know, who had, she had never done anything, so our, partner, uh, our partner's response to her was, you know, what, what are the things that you can do? She said, I can cook. Uh, so can you make potato wafers? She said, yeah, that's something I do for my family almost every, every other day. It's like, why don't you make this into a business? And she started off with making <coughs> 2 kgs of potato wafers and the last time I met her, she was doing about 40 kgs. Yeah. And her husband, who is an auto, you know, auto rickshaw driver, now says, okay, how can I help you? Now has become a partner in her business, uses his auto to actually take all this stuff to the market and has been supporting her. And for Mamtas to see, for me to see her confidence grow over the years, I think it's it's just That's been amazing. amazing. Absolutely. So in the last eight years, we've done about 35 crores of disbursals. Mm. About 15 crores is fresh capital that we have raised, but then it also gets reinvested. So overall, it's about 35 crores. And about 8,500 people have joined us as social investors. We have a few corporates who have participated as part of this CSR. And yeah, we just hope to continue on this journey and scale our impact. How many have benefited? Uh, we have supported 40,000 individuals. Oh. I mean, 40,000 loans have been given to 40,000 individuals. So, Vishwa has created my question actually. Yeah, the mechanics of Lande now does the things fun. What next, guys? That's the next question. I think what we have done in the last uh, last one year, I mean, last seven and a half years was really more of an experiment to some extent, learning from the ground, understanding what our communities need, building partnerships. And I think we're confident now to really look at growth. And the last one year has been about preparing our organization, preparing our team members to be able to dream big and achieve those numbers. So we, we never believed that. Uh, believe in scaling for the sake of scaling. So it was not just how many loans that we do, but it was really about what is the impact that we're trying to create. And unless we had a good handle on that, we didn't want to say, okay, next month we're going to disperse this, next month we're going to do these many loans. But now I think we're so confident of the partner network that we have created and you know the roadmap. So this year we're really doubling the disbursals. So last year we did about 8 crores of disbursals. This year we are going to be touching the 15 crore mark. And um, every year we are looking at you know doubling this growth, but then without really compromising on our impact. So if you look at the growth of any microfinance institution, this would be laughable, right? People would say, okay, so little and you know such a long time, but then we are okay to do that because it's about building this in a very sustainable way, so that you know you're not really creating trouble as opposed to you know creating impact. Excellent. How big is your organization? How big we are. Right now, we are 26 of us. You know, so just from a sectoral perspective, so the current government's you know initiatives, new initiatives like the payment banks, uh, is a is a revolutionary idea, and we feel that there's an opportunity for Rangi to play a role. Uh, uh, we could partner with payment banks and offer uh, credit to <coughs> to to their customers like never before. So so from that perspective, it's a huge opportunity. Um, uh, to scale right. uh, and also access communities for otherwise very difficult to get access to. Excellent. I think what is the average size of your this person? So it's about 7,000 rupees um, average. Uh, the highest we get <coughs> for an individual is 50,000 rupees. Um, so 
talk about the model when you know other like an investor comes on your forum and what what is it in it for them and how do they work kind of so they get about 2% uh, flat uh, rate so it's about 3.5% uh, uh, typical savings bank kind of a rate but uh, and then Randi gets 2% on every loan which we do uh, against the flat rate um, so out of a 10% interest rate which are, uh, the borrower ends up paying it's a flat rate, which was sort of 18 percent APR. Uh, Five percent um, goes to our partner NGO or the nonprofit. Uh, half a percent we have for six sigma. We follow six sigma, so the six sigma incentive against for the partner. Half a percent for contingency. Uh, this is largely to write off, you know, uh, non-willful defaults uh, if there are any. And then, um, yeah, it adds up to. So any individual can actually choose a specific, you know, uh, entrepreneur they want to support. They can also choose sectors. Uh, <coughs> we have funded about 415 different activities so far, but they are all from very broad sectors such as agriculture, education. So they can actually choose a specific sector. Um, they also get to track how the repayments are coming back and uh, they can either reinvest that in other projects or they can withdraw <coughs> it. They also get to track the impact. Um, and uh, that's the online bits, but apart from that, people can do a lot more than just contribute money. A lot of them have actually gone on to start chapters for us. So there's a very active Pune chapter. Um, and uh, what the chapters do is basically they're like an extended <coughs> team of Rangbe. So they do a lot of local events, you know, um, meet field partners who have already been working with us go on field trips, visit borrowers, evaluate how things are working. So they come back and also give us feedback on what's working and what's not working. So the chapter really constitutes all social investors who live locally because they're already like-minded individuals. It's a great way for them to come together and work. So we have chapters in different cities now and also in a few countries. So those are really gaining traction now. What is the default percentage? It's about half a percent, but we also have about close to eight percent delay. Uh, this is largely because of our early partnerships. <coughs> in some sense, it is also a learning uh, curve for us. Uh, barring those, uh, which we look at the last two to three, or last three years, uh, there ha has absolutely no delay as well. Uh, so yeah, so eight percent about delay. What is the bank uh, percentage? Well, actually, they don't lend to begin with. Uh, no, no, what is general NPA, whatever, um, what they call it? Um, what is the default percentage for? 3 to 5 percent. 3 to 5 percent? Oh, I think for the industry? Yeah, that's about 3 to 5 percent. Yeah. This is good, that. Yeah. Uh, largely because the banks, even though it's priority sector, uh -huh. so if you look at a microfinance model, you know, they don't have any uh, defaults. Yeah, they don't have any defaults because it's a very peer pressure, it's non negotiable, they're very strict in enforcing the norms. What is similarity or difference between the new Swamman model and your model? So in many ways, actually, you know, so Muhammad Yunus actually was our inspiration. Um, um, we have read his books, uh, you know, so many times over, uh, many times over. So, um, so at its core, you know, we are entirely, you know, exactly the same principles <coughs> of Muhammad Yunus. In fact, you know, uh, something which we could pat on our back is that you know, we actually two percentage points less than what Mohammed was charged, charges in Bangladesh. Uh, so his, his interest is about 20% APR versus 17.9% APR. Um, what is APR? Annualized percentage rate. Uh, so if you want to compare two loan products anywhere in the world, and essentially what it means is it's an interest rate plus any other costs associated with the loan. So it gives you a very holistic cost in the sense of the Cost in 2010, how much percentage of your assets were in Andhra Pradesh? It's a great question. We had half a million rupees uh, and we lost it instantly. Because the, the, the percentage is how much? At that time, our portfolio was also quite. Um, in the total portfolio, it was about a crore. Yeah, it was about a crore, so about 5%. Can you share uh, what has been the support that the Tata Foundation? Yeah, so we've been fortunate. So at the peak of the financial crisis in 2008, we got the support from ICSA Foundation, um, and uh, they gave us uh, uh, 4.62 crores, largely to scale runway, take it to a 